Apostle started us off on an amazing tangent last week, uh, just teaching us about um, the value of a prophet. And I know he had said that we would begin on healing today. But one of the things we have realized is that if, if the people don't know how to believe in their prophets, then healing is hard to come by. Um, change in our lives is hard to come by. Because the majority of the times that God will change your life, especially in church, will be from something that is said on this pulpit. When God says something on this pulpit, you will need to have the posture to receive. If you remember the parable of the sower, the issue was not the sower. The issue was the state of the recipients. So the seed was good, but either the soil was rocky or, you know, something went wrong at the place of the recipient. And many times it's there will be simple declaration. Have you gone to a crusade? Okay, maybe. Have you ever gone to a meeting and people are running forward with a testimony? Some are lifting their crutches. Some are, you know, and their lives are being changed. And it's because they had and what they had did something to them. Many times it's because they went hungry and ready to hear the word that was coming from God. So the preparedness of the minister can never um, replace the preparedness of the, of the recipient. The hearer of the word has got to be ready and their hearts have got to be open for what the Lord wants to do. In fact, it's even possible for you to receive from unexpected sources. We've always said that many times in Pentecostal circles, people peg the miraculous on a person. Apostle was saying it last time, that there are people who hear, hear, members of Fortress, in church every Sunday, but they are actually members of Apostle Selman. They are members of Apostle Arome. They are members of Apostle Kimani. They are members of... They are, it's not wrong to listen to people, but sometimes for us, we put, we place, we decide that that person is the one who carries what I have. But one of the things that Apostle and I always say, we can go to a Catholic church and be blessed. We can go to unexpected places. Someone can say something to us. A child can say something to us. And that thing becomes something that the Lord is speaking to our hearts. One of the things that is going to change your life is understanding how to believe in your prophets. Amen. Amen. The, in Deuteronomy 18, verse 18, we find the first reference to a prophet. The Bible says, I will raise up for them a prophet. I will put my words in his mouth and he will tell them everything I command him. I will put my words, I will raise for them a prophet from among their countrymen, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. Now, we've been addressing uh, a religious, a spirit of religion in the body of Christ. While we are teaching this, we are addressing the spirit of religion where people will say, but we all hear God. Okay, And so today, I want us to discuss why the prophet is crucial. Now, the first thing that I want you to understand is that God is a God of family. In the entire biblical narrative, you will find God addressed as the God of families. Okay, He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jesus was called the son of David by Matthew. Our introduction to Jesus was that he was a son of David. Understand that the issue of family is so serious that the lineage of Jesus mattered. Okay, the lineage, everything that, that God did, everybody that God put in their place was because God was organizing the family of Jesus. Now what is so interesting about it is that all these people from Abraham, from, from Isaac, Jacob, it goes that way. After David, it goes all the way up to Joseph. Are we together? Yes. You're not answering? Yes. 
Are we together? Yes. So it goes all the way up to <laughs> it goes all the way up to Joseph. So it will interest you to know that Jesus was that Joseph that David was related to Joseph. When Jesus is being called the son of David, he's not technically the son of Joseph and therefore not technically the son of David. In fact, Jesus was not related whatsoever to Joseph and so was completely blood and related to David. But it was God's plan so that he would show you how even adoption into his family is important. So, Jesus was the son of Mary. Nobody speaks about the lineage of Mary. We all speak about the lineage of Jesus being Joseph. Why? Because the issue of a father adopting a son was serious to God. So the issue... Yes, and he was the legitimate son of Joseph. By what? By adoption. So God is a God of family. Even Jesus was not going to be outside a family. Okay? So the, the, the Bible says in Genesis 2.18, it is not good for a man to be alone. The idea of being alone is not of God. Pastor G. <laughs> the idea of a man being alone. <laughs> it's deep. You can bring your offering right now, Pastor G. <laughs> God intended for people... God intended for people to be set in families. Psalm 68 from verse 4. This is what the Bible says. I need you to hear this clearly. Please don't forget this. The Bible says, sing to God, sing in praise, and whoever is on projection, you're doing so well. Who is projecting? Oh, Jewel is projecting. Good job. Very good job. So fast. Sing to God. Pray, sing praises to his name. Lift up a song for him who rides through the desert. Um, his name is the Lord. Be in good spirits before him. Uh huh. Can I get... Okay, let me, let, let's go on here. A father of the fatherless and a judge and protector of the widows is God in his holy habitation. Verse 6. God makes a home for the lonely or... God sets the lonely in families. He leads the prisoners into prosperity. But the stubborn and rebellious dwell in a patched land. What is the context of this scripture? The context of this scripture is family. Okay? So we are talking about family. So the Bible is saying God sets the lonely in families. So God will pick out someone that doesn't have a family and link them up with a family of God, link them up with a husband or wife, link them up with a child. This is the working of God to ensure that you have a family. But the Bible also says that only the stubborn and rebellious dwell in a parched land. What does that mean? It means that there are people who will dwell in places of dryness because they were rebellious to their family. They were resistant to God setting them in a family. There are people who have been brought to fortress assembly because you need a family. All of us, really. All of us were brought here because you needed a family. But if you are stubborn about family, you are going to live in a patched land. So you are not here primarily to hear me speak, just to hear me speak or apostle. You are here to be set in a family. It is in the setup of the family that the prisoners are led into prosperity. But the ones who are stubborn against the setup of a family, they will live in a scorched or a burnt land. They will live in a dry land. Are we together? So the spirit of religion, the spirit of independence will always try and dislodge you from your family. It's the spirit of independence that will get somebody saying, I left church, but I didn't leave God. 
It is the spirit of independence that will have men criticizing the body of Christ, yet they are in the body. How does the nose rebel against the eye? How is that possible? But when you see, I don't entertain on my Facebook or anywhere people who attack the church. You attack the church, block. Why? Because this is the body. You must not be independent of the body. It is the spirit of pride that will get you out of the family so that you can dwell in a stubborn and rebellious, uh, in a patched and dry land. I want you to hear me well that for as long as God has put you here, you are a part of a family. Extrovert, introvert, and being a part of a family is being a part of something bigger than yourself. I also want you to understand that nobody here is perfect. Okay? Nobody here is perfect. The truth is, I didn't even know you were sick for me to not call you. Right? The truth is, I am, not, I, am, I am dealing with certain things in my life. I may not pray for you every day. But that is what family is for, so that we can stand in for one another. We were telling, uh, we, actually we have this conversation a lot, when people ask us, how have you managed to raise a close-knit church? And how have you, you know, people will ask us different questions about how we've managed to do certain things. And one of the things we keep saying is that God has raised people in our own church to pray for us. Because we have had a lot of doctrine that sons cannot pray for their fathers. Have you ever heard that? A father cannot stay, sit here, and sons come and surround and pray for them. We don't belong to that school of thought. We belong to the school of thought where if our hands need to be raised, it's our sons who are likely to raise them. And therefore, being a part of a family means that you can be able to bring something that somebody else cannot bring. I have always said that in our leadership team, we have people who are so, so, so different. So even in how they lead, they, we don't have the same person. We are not replicating Apostle Dennis and Pastor Lee. We are not replicating ourselves. There are areas where you will see us in somebody, but they retain their personalities. How Minister Nyota leads the worship team is very, very different from how uh, Prophetess leads the ushers. Very different. How Pastor Charles leads is very different from how I lead. How Pastor Faith leads is very different from how I lead. But that's why we are in a body. That's why we are in a family. If we rebel against it by saying, I don't like how they lead, I don't like how they are, you are going to dwell in a patched land. We were telling some people yesterday, if there is something you have to pray for is social skills. You have to pray for your social... You have to pray for your... Hakuna kujitoa kwa watu. The idea of kujikalisha is demonic. <laughs> Napenda tu kujikalisha. Niliamua hi life is me, myself and I. That is demonic. That is the devil's voice in your ear. Reject and reject and reject. In Jesus name it shall never be your portion. You are a part of a family edifying the body of Christ and just the way you are we need you. Just the way you are, we need you. We need your gifts. We need your personality. Yeah, I was just thinking, you know, like I'm very, I know I come off as a bit, but I'm very serious. Like as a person, I am so serious. But my husband is like every day is a party. Everything is a joke. Everything is hilarious. Every, you could be telling him something sad. You know those people who laugh at inappropriate moments? <laughs> You're telling him something, so he finds it hilarious. Like to him, it's totally funny because everything to him is a party. He'll be dancing in the house. I have so many videos of him dancing. He'll be shouting, Thank you, Holy Ghost. He'll be clapping his hands loudly until one day Sifa was like, Dad, everybody in this house is quiet. Why are you making noise? <laughs> Don't joke with Jen Alpha. <laughs> I but I needed it. Hey, I need. <laughs> I needed it. I I really needed how fun he is. 
then as much as he's fun, he's also too, he's not spontaneous. He's not, I mean, he's not like he doesn't want to go out, doesn't want to, he wants to stay in the house and have fun in the house. Me? I, as long as it's with him, we can go even now. If he says, Mweh, you shall preach to yourselves about how to believe in your prophets because I'm out. Ah, I like going places. I like drives. I like fun. I like date nights. He needed me. He needed he needed my kind of crazy. Yes, otherwise I'm like, too having fun up or too dancing in the house. I'm like, twende uka dance yo pale. I remember one day. Yes, yes, you needed me. <laughs> one day we went to a yacht and we were having a dinner. And you know, like, this is so romantic. It's water. You know, like, it's nice set up. My husband is like, oh, my God. Like, he's so serious. He's like, this is the doing of God. Me, I'm like... <laughs> he's like every preacher who wants to believe God for increase. They need to come and see this. Me, me, I want to kiss my husband. Kwanza hamuko. So I just want to make out with him. And uh, you know, I was, I'm like, what is this? Surely, I have dressed up. We are here glorifying Jesus on our arch. I was like, let me show you another way to glorify God. <laughs> we need each other, is the point I'm trying to make in so many words. <laughs> Proverbs 18 <laughs> We need each other. Amen. Amen. If it was up to him, Yani I would be wearing nice long nice long mama canis anyway. <laughs> he who willfully separates himself from God and man seeks his own desire. He quarrels against all sound wisdom. Uh, can you read it? Can we read it together? One, two, go. He who so sound wisdom sets you in a family. You need to belong to a family. Can I can I just push that a bit? That belonging to a family is not showing up at gatherings. Belonging to a family is participating, building the family together. It's not, it's not showing up at a gathering. Some of you, <laughs> you've been a visitor at Fortress for far too long. When Elsie is saying, if you're here for the first time, some of you, you still feel like a visitor. Change your ways. You are a member. Turn to your neighbor. Where are you a member? Yes, behave like a member. Join a department. Make sure that sasa kama kuna watu leo wamepanga hii music ya Jabidi mbona hawakuita Eunice Njeri. Huyu Jabidi huyu ni nani? Na nani hawa hype hype sio ni ndoe. What are those? What are those? And so you are planning to leave immediately after the service. You are part of this family you are equally a host of Jabidi like us. If you are judging us, judge yourself as well. So nobody leaves after the service. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> Tukiambua jiruse, una jirusa. Kuambua una jibamba, una jibamba pia. Amen. Genesis 11. The Bible speaks about these people who came together and they decided to build the Tower of Babel. And it's so interesting because it is God's acknowledgement. It's God's divine acknowledgement. In all his infinite wisdom, God acknowledges in verse... In verse 6, God acknowledges that as long as these people are speaking one language, there shall be nothing that shall be impossible for them. Listen to that. The acknowledgement of God is that the people that will speak one language, 
even if they are doing the wrong thing, nothing shall be impossible for them. That's the power of unity. Now, unity is not sameness. Unity does not mean that we are the same. Unity does not mean we preach the same. Unity does not mean that we, we, we dress the same. Unity means that we have the same content on the inside. We are moving in the same direction. That's why you need to be in a family so that you can understand in which direction are we moving. Praise the name of Jesus. Those are two people that say amen. amen. So God acknowledges that with unity, nothing would be impossible for these people. That's why you need to be a part of the of a family, but not just showing up but being connected to that family. The Bible says in Psalms 133, that behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Then goes on to say in verse 3, for there the Lord commandeth a blessing. There is a blessing in unity. Amen. 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 There is a blessing when a husband and a wife are united. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Leviticus 26 verse 8. The Bible says, Five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight. If you understand the mathematics of unity, it is not directly proportional. So it doesn't mean that one of you will put ten to flight, so two of you will put twenty to flight. In the place of unity, there is exponential growth in your strength even in your in, in individual strength. Praise the name of Jesus. Your own individual strength is multiplied in the place of unity. Are you hearing me? Yes. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. So, that, that first bit I want to establish is the value of family. But the second thing I want to establish is God's direction for that family. <clears throat> so in Genesis 11, God comes down and scatters the people. How does he scatter them? He begins to confuse them to speak in Kikuyu, to speak in, in uh, Mandarin, to speak in Portuguese and Spanish, and they cannot understand each other. Why did God do that? Because it was not initiated by him. I want you to hear me and hear me clearly. Unity is important but only when it comes from God. That is why marriages that start on the wrong foundation will struggle until somebody goes back to the foundation. So when the Lord is saying, do not be unequally yoked, just hear him. You may not agree with him, but hear him. <laughs> you may be thinking that God is punishing you for somebody else's sin, but obey. Why? Because anything that is where there is unity that is not ordained by God, it shall be scattered. Entities that are not started by God will often scatter. Why? Because God will not endorse disobedience. I don't know if you're hearing me. God will not do what? He will not pay for you to go on the path of destruction. He will not pay your flights to destruction. So anywhere there is unity that is not God-ordained, there shall be scattering. So this is very important, that while there is unity, the direction of God is more important. So that means that if you're in a church, you're in a church where there is God's direction. So it's not enough for you to say, I go to church on Sunday. You need to go to church where there is the leading of God. Glory to God. It's not enough to go to church and go and be given stories. I've noticed that now there is a lot of churches, especially in Kikuyu, where they are called Mataro, churches where it's advice. But a church was never meant to be. And, and, and I want you to hear me like our, our mandate is very simple. Jesus Christ and the preaching of the word of God. Is, that's it. So if we are not doing other things, it's okay. If the church doesn't have a school, it's okay. If the church doesn't have a hospital, it's okay. But it is not okay for a church not to teach the word of God and be busy with everything else. That church shall scatter. Praise the name of Jesus. So in, in, in 
Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21, the Bible says, when you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way you shall go. This is the way, walk in it. Uh -huh. Psalms 119 verse 105. It is the voice of God that normally gives direction. In the Bible, in the, in the, in Psalms 119, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So now when you combine unity and God's voice, those people are unstoppable. Where there is unity and there is the voice of God, you shall be unstoppable. And in fortress we have unity and we hear the voice of God and therefore we are unstoppable. We are unstoppable. If you're not saying amen. <laughs> Matthew chapter 18 verse 19 to 20. The Bible says, that again, truly, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything, if... Where are my readers? Can someone help me read? Mm -hmm. Okay, so many people think that the Bible is speaking about about simply about agreement. But I want you to see clearly that it is agreeing in, in, in the name of Jesus. So it's not just agreeing about anything. That's why you cannot just date anybody. <laughs> That's why just because it's a good business idea, you don't get into any business partnership. Just because the job opened up does not mean it's for you. Just because the church is close to your house doesn't mean it's for you. Praise the name of Jesus. It is agreement in his name. So unity is crucial, but in his name is more important. So the voice of God becomes the direction by which families must flow. So look at the biblical narrative. Everything was flowing towards Jesus. Everything that God, everybody that God placed. If some of you were asked, Jacob would have never been in that lineage. Okay, let's start with Abraham, our father. The killer of his son. Murderer, potential murderer of his son. <laughs> eh? Giver of his wife. I don't want to use a, a bad word. Donator. Donator of his wife. <laughs> liar 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 hmm? imagine the blessing that we call the blessing that when he became rich most of it was because people were like Aki you didn't tell us she's your wife come and see Isaac you would never and Jacob you would never have put Jacob in the lineage of Jesus but, but God was deliberate to show, this is what my family looks like. The family that brought forth the Messiah, this is what it looks like. So that never would any of us stand up and say, we are better than you. Nobody would ever stand and say, I'm the one that should be used by God. In that lineage was Rahab. Rahab was in that lineage. Please remember David, murderer. The other one is potential. This one is murderer. Eh? Snatcher of wives. <laughs> Balcony admirer of people showering. <laughs> I mean pervert, surely. Very pervert. No, but David could be no match. Oh, and the man with blood, 66 battles. You could not tell David, Ngwe, he will kill you. He was insulted by a foolish man. The man's name is Fool. He, the man insults him. The wife has to go and beg. And even after she begs, David is like, I'm going to get you. 
I like the way you are begging me. You shall be my wife one day. I mean, how? Well, just when you think we have done well, Solomon. Bad boy extraordinaire. Eh? Cheating on his wife with 999 women. Just so that Jesus could say there is no, God could say there is no bad boy that is beyond me. If this one could cheat with 999 women. Sazi let you and 64 others. Character development in Nairobi, you and 64 others. Those ones were saying, me and 999. Yo. <laughs> and you know for sure he couldn't handle them. He couldn't. Why? Because they led him astray. It was because of them he worshipped other gods. So he wasn't even being the man. They were the ones driving him. Lust was driving him. Yet Jesus was born into that lineage. God was orchestrating a family that looked a certain way so that he would be redempt. He would show you what redemption looks like. That every time you stand up and think and look down on yourself, you can be able to say, even me, God can love me. Glory to God. Okay, so what did we say was the first main point? <coughs> Family or unity. The second one? Okay, so how does divine direction flow? It flows through number three, divine order. Divine order. John chapter 10, verse 27 to 28. So let's agree that we all hear God, or we all should hear God. We all what? We all should hear God. Are we together? Oh, yes. Those, if you're on your phone, you're writing notes. Yes. You're not on Facebook. Yes. You're not on TikTok. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, the sheep that are my own hear my voice and listen to me. I know them and they follow me. Hearing God is not really optional. In fact, the people who say we all hear God, it's not a flex. Do you understand? Don't flex for us by telling us, oh, we don't need a prophet, we all hear God. We all hear God. What are you flexing for? We all hear God. It's true. Are we together? If you're not hearing God, I just don't want to go into that scripture. That says, you don't hear me because you are not mine. Anyway, um, begin to hear God in Jesus' name. If you won't say amen. amen. Begin to hear God. Amen. You shall hear God amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. My sheep hear my voice. Okay. But the interesting thing about God is that you hearing him does not negate divine order. It does not exempt you from the order he has set in place. So Jesus is our shepherd. But he has allocated what we call under shepherds. Okay, an under shepherd is a shepherd of lower ranking that executes the will of the shepherd. Okay? Now, I want to ask you, there is sheep. I want you to imagine a farm with 5,000 sheep. These sheep hear the voice of the shepherd. The shepherd may not be able to, I want you to think of a human shepherd. The shepherd may not be able to be, take care of them 24 hours a day. So he appoints 50 under shepherds under him. These sheep, do they know the voice of the under shepherd? It's not even a trick question. Do the sheep know the, sh the voice of their under shepherds? Yes. So they hear every shepherd that they have, right? 
so when God, when Jesus is saying the sheep hear the voice of the shepherd, it's not just his voice. It's also the voice of the shepherd that God has put over. Are we together? So you understand the voice of your own shepherd. What is understanding the voice of your own shepherd? Understanding or hearing in this case is not recognition. Hearing in this case is not recognition, it is understanding. Okay? So it is possible for um, my mom to say some things because I find her kikuyu like deep. So there are things she will say. I'm hearing her speak, but I don't know what she's saying. For those of you who are raised with in an intertribal house, or maybe like my child. Our, our children, they don't understand Kikuyu at all. So if we want to discuss them, yes, <laughs> even our different Kikuyus, okay. So, but when we want to discuss them, we switch to Kikuyu. When we start switching to Kikuyu, they know, they, that story has missed them completely. Yani I can be saying gaka ni karagia gaka ni guka hura gaka kana waga kogiria ni guka lumbia and he's just there smiling because he doesn't understand does he recognize my voice so he knows I'm the one speaking but he cannot be able to know what I'm saying but the Bible says that my sheep hear my voice. Not recognition, but understanding. That you had the shepherd, but you didn't just hear. You knew exactly what he was saying. You knew the direction he's taking you in. You know he was saying, go in this way. The silent voice in your ear that is telling you, turn right, turn left, can be the voice of your physical shepherd telling you, don't go in that direction. Glory to God. Sometimes, I, there are many times that I have suggested I will suggest to someone and I'm like, I don't know, I don't feel this guy you're dating. Someone that is not my sheep will think it's a suggestion. Someone that is my sheep will hear like it is a slap. Do you understand? Are we together? Please look up. Are we together? So, and you will know when something is not just the shepherd speaking, when there is divine direction in it. There are times we don't have the, we cannot be able to tell you, you shall never ever do this again. We may not speak like that, but we can tell you, I don't think this direction you're going. I don't like this business. I don't like this. I don't like, the minute that we say it, you know. But it's not just that. It's that the sheep long to hear the shepherd's voice. Why is this important? This is important because the sheep have no direction outside of the shepherd. I don't know if you have ever seen this little video, like a gif, where there is a sheep inside a ditch. Like ditch, Kamsa. A shepherd comes and pulls the sheep out. The sheep runs back into the ditch. And you're like, I'm not understanding. In another example, there is a pole here, like a goalpost, and another pole here. There are 15,000 sheep, and all of them are fighting to come and use this little space. Why? Because they cannot imagine they can go outside the poles. So they are all lining up, totally free, but they all want to squeeze through this tiny gate. There's another example of an elephant. This could be in India, because that's where they tame elephants. Now, in India, when they tame an elephant, they tie an elephant. I don't know, have you seen an elephant? You know a baby elephant is like up to here. A teenage elephant is like up to here. A grown elephant is huge. They take a plastic seat and they tie a rope here and tie and tether the elephant. Because the elephant is tame, it will stay 
around here. It is the voice of a shepherd that would be able to break this, this elephant free of any imagined or real limitations. The voice of a... So the shepherd long, the sheep long to hear the voice of the shepherd because the voice of the shepherd will deliver them. It's the shepherd that can see who you are mefungwa. The sheep is imagining, I'm okay. I'm living my best life. YOLO. Hashtag, I was born for this. Well, everything. Eh? But you don't understand that you are bound. The voice of the shepherd is the one that will tell you, get out of that space. <clears throat> I remember one day, my, my spiritual mom that raised me, she, we had a conversation, a brief conversation, and she told me, you know you're very sensitive. You're very sensitive. And I remember... I had been told I am sensitive since I was a child. And I told her, and what they meant when they were telling me I'm sensitive is that I am easily hurt, that I am emotional. And so I told her, Mom, I'm very sorry. I'm working on it. And she says, it's not a bad thing. She said, I mean, you're the person that would sense when I'm not okay the most in the entire team. You're the person that is most sensitive to my needs. Something I had never had. That's the day I got delivered from thinking that being sensitive is a bad thing. It's the voice of the shepherd that will deliver you from ideologies you've had since you were a child. I remember I was describing to Pastor Koi the other day. I, I told her, you know that you're so laid back, and I was describing the kind of man I think that. And she's like, am I really laid back? And I'm like, how don't you know? Like, how? But it's because most of us were brought up thinking certain things about ourselves. In fact, don't blame entirely people in bad relationships. They think that's what they are worth. But the voice of a shepherd will sustain you so that you never go into places that are beneath you. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So in First Peter, thank you. In First Peter chapter 5 verse 2, the Bible says, Pastor Koi, will I catch my breath? According to the foreknowledge of God the Father, Okay, shepherd and guide and protect the flock of God among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but voluntarily according to the will of God and not motivated for shameful gain, but with wholehearted enthusiasm. So the Lord is appointing shepherds to watch over his people. And he's saying, don't do it under compulsion. He's not saying shepherds should choose, a uh, sheep should choose. When you hear not under compulsion, it's not about the sheep. He's not saying that exercising oversight over them and they must not be under compulsion. No, no, no. He's saying you as a shepherd do it willingly without being under compulsion. Are we together? So the, the, volu the volunteering of the shepherd is what God is asking. Now imagine how much a shepherd volunteers. And then the sheep are like, I'm hurt, I'm hurt. I was asking the other day, have you ever considered, okay, passion translation, please. Have you ever considered that we have church hurt? Have you ever considered that Pastor Lee can have church hurt? What do you think I should do with it? If you, your hurt, you will be like, I'm leaving. What do you think I should do when you hurt me? Huh? Amma, you're like, you don't hurt me. You're actually thinking you don't hurt me. <laughs> huh? I give you an example. No, I have to. I have to give you an example. Apostle has been saying, Pastor Lee has been unwell. Let's pray for her. Like some of you have noticed I have missed a few Sundays. Some of you have never even asked. You have my number, right? Or did you ask for it and someone didn't give you? 
Oh, yes. You send me your prayer requests. I'll pray for you. <laughs> so what should a shepherd do? Why do you think that it's okay for you to up and leave your family? Tell your neighbor, hakuna mahali unaenda. Hakuna mahali tunaenda. Kama umechoka, lamba glucose. Kunyo maji. Punga hewa. <laughs> Pumua kidogo. Tuendele. Kama. Kama injili. <laughs> Please switch on this screen. To be compassionate shepherds who tenderly care for God's flock and who feed them well. For you have the responsibility to guide, protect, and oversee. Consider it a joyous pleasure and not merely a religious duty. Lead from the heart under God's leadership, not as a way to gain finances dishonestly, but as a way to eagerly and cheerfully serve. That is the charge of the shepherd. But remember... That, he's, that the Bible is saying we consider it a responsibility to do what? So the sheep should be guided. What else should the sheep be? Protected. And what else? Overseen. I want to ask you, have you considered, because what is oversight? Oversight would mean that we are overseeing your life. We are overseeing your life. I don't know. Do you understand how serious that is? You are, we are overseeing your life. That means that there has to be a level of vulnerability that you bring for us to oversee. You cannot be under a shepherd you don't trust. I excuse you. Actually, I take it back. Nimesema, you cannot. Hakuna mahali unaenda. If you don't trust us, I can recommend for you a pastor you can trust. You cannot be under a shepherd whose heart you don't trust. You must trust us enough for us to be able to give you oversight. Glory to God. Okay. So we say that we hear all of us here. But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13.9. 1 Corinthians 13.9. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when all that is perfect has come, that, then that which is in part shall be done away. So that means that nobody is hearing in totality. So you are hearing God, Pastor Chris, but you're not hearing everything you need to hear. Are we together? You're not hearing everything. Now, even if we prophesy in part, you have to understand that the idea of hearing in totality is the idea of, number one, being scripturally correct, hearing God's audible or, or his voice in your heart. Like, it, it really is hearing a prophet. So hearing God is hearing him in different ways. So even if you prophesy, there has to be a deposit in you of the taught word of God for you to of the logos, for you to be able to prophesy in accurately in accordance to the word of God. So that means that everybody has a blind spot. You would not believe that there are people we see. This week, we sat with somebody, Apostle and I, sat with Two, our seniors, two of our seniors, and we told them, we have a dilemma in our hands, and we need your help. Let me tell you, if you were there, you would be like, please, can you respect Apostle's oil? Can you respect Pastor Lee's oil? Because we were being told, why? How can you do it like this? You cannot. You eh, tuliangukiwa, tulichangamkiwa, tulichangamkiwa. By the time we are leaving, we are not talking. We're just like, yes, sir. Yes, ma. Yes, sir. Karibu, we go on our knees. We're like, why? We don't, prof we don't see everything about our lives. We need people to speak wisdom into our lives. Amen. So what is God's solution to your blind spots? God's solution to your blind spots is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Uh-huh. 
for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Hold on. So, why did God give evan why did he give the fivefold for the perfecting? Okay, I want you to read it out loud to say it, to answer me out loud, but I want you to remove the word saints and put your name in it. Okay. So, he he gave the fivefold for Okay, and for the work of whose ministry? ministry? Yes, for the work of your ministry. And for the edifying of who? My no, who is the body? So he gave the fivefold for who to be perfected? Because you only prophesy in parts. You only hear in part without the family, without God's direction, without divine order. So divine order is established by God so that you would be perfected. So that the work of your ministry would be perfected. So that you would be edified. Mm -hmm. verse, 4, verse 13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So, that for you to come to the fullness of the stature, the, and to the fullness of the stature, the, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, for you to be matured, you need the fivefold. You are not maturing yourself. Deal to live or to you're not maturing yourself, you're being matured by the fivefold, and even us in the fivefold are being matured by another fivefold. Uh -huh. Verse 14 that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive what makes people to be tossed about being tossed about is being unstable it's that when there is the wind of this doctrine umeenda nayo umeanguka nayo my god I needed a place to use it. <laughs> when there is another one, ume, ume anguka nayo. That instability. In fact, the Bible says so that we may be no more children. Even if you're hearing for yourself, without the fivefold, you're still a child. That's why you will find all these uh, self-exalted people correcting every single minister. Correct, they have no wisdom. They think they have knowledge, but that knowledge is without zeal. They have no wisdom to apply that knowledge. They don't understand the order of that. Those don't follow those people. Amen. Yeah, they ignore the fivefold. They tell you, but you are the fivefold. But you are the, they don't understand divine order and what it is for. Glory to God. Amen. So deception comes when people are not equipped by the fivefold. Mm. So the gifts of God in the fivefold are not just for foretelling or foretelling. The prophet is not here to tell you your phone number, front and back. The prophet is not here to tell you your ID number. The prophet is not here to tell you where you come from. I see a village. They are not here to tell you that in 1496 there was an enchantment in your, fa in your family. The, the prophet is here to perfect you. Amen. This is true. Glory to God. Amen. And I'm not saying word of knowledge is bad. Okay. Second Chronicles 15 from verse 3. Thank yeah. you, babe. Second Chronicles 15 from verse 3. Now for a long season Israel had been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. Okay, so they were missing how many things? How many things was Israel missing? Three. Now, why are you not saying it back? Three. Okay, by the way, uh, non-responsive... There are things you think are a sign of maturity that are not. Eh? Ah, ah, <laughs> Alafu, mkikuja fortress, mtu wanachanga kukach pala juu. Violence is a must. It's not, it's, it's a must. 
just be happy. Okay. Uh-huh. Very good. Good. So they did have three things. Number one, the true God. What they had were gods. Okay. Number two, they didn't have what? Very important for you to understand that Israel was going off because they did not have a teaching priest. But that shall never be your portion because you have teaching priests in Jesus' name. Number three, what did they not have? Why did they not have the law? Because they didn't have a teaching priest. And because they were lawless without a teaching priest, they went into uh, idolatry and were therefore without... Therefore, you cannot remove the teaching priest from this equation. Yes. So the king had this and he responded accurately and Israel was saved. Glory to God. The whole Bible was written by men. Let me shock you. The whole of it. Men. Like this group is told, you are going to write God's word. And forever and ever and ever, what you write shall be the law. Forty men wrote the entire Bible. The Bible that we swear by. The Bible that was written by men. That's why I cannot understand men disrespecting men. Because it was the, you shouldn't trust them. They had funny personalities. They were breaking tablets. The writers of the Bible, they were cutting off people's ears. Others were murderers before they met Jesus. Yeah. Yet, you believe that what they are saying was inspired by God. Do you know them? Why if you that? saw Peter today, Why? if you saw Paul, would you know him? Were you there? Do you know his sister? Do you know him at Village Ametoka? Here I am, you know me. You know me by my three names. You don't even know. Paul at Ujuangi Jinazake Zingine. Now we to put the apostle. <laughs> eh, eh, na siyo Paulo na Sila is not the same person. Ni Paulo Sila ni mtu mwingine. <laughs> Mimi muna nijua. And if I come and tell you you are blessed, na doubt. Na Paul mwenye mjayo na muna amini, shuali. <laughs> so how do you profit from your shepherd? <laughs> How do you profit from your shepherd? Number one, believe in them. First Chronicles 2020. Believe in his believe in the Lord your God and you will be established. Believe in his prophets and you will succeed. This is so what is the root meaning of the word believe? Number one. Be firm or faithful to trust or believe. Be permanent. Amen. Amen. Be what? Amen. By the way, when, when you're reading your Bible, I want you to go and download the Strong's Concordance so that you don't think we are making things up. When words are written, you, you know how like your language is that one word can mean different things, or that the root of it can be a whole, you can open a whole can of worms by it. So Strong's looks at the original meaning of the words and then gives you different words to describe that word. Please download it for yourself. So I'm getting things this from the Strong's Concordance. So be permanent. Be quiet. Niema, be morally true or be certain. Establish. Be steadfast. So what does that mean? When Esther see money, establish. <laughs> Those of you who are not on TikTok are like, what are we doing? Now, 
So believing in your prophets is not so much according to this at the word level. It's not at the words level. It's not right now you hearing. It's about you staying. It's about the permanence of the posture of your heart that you're here to stay. I was telling, I was telling somebody the other day that the greatest affirmation for my ministry are the young people that I came with from Kerenyaga. Because when I met them, I was, I was expecting Taji. And when they saw me, they were just happy. We are having a baby. No questions asked. They are like, we're having a baby. Our pastor is having a baby. No questions asked. They don't ask anything, ever. They are just happy. When I say, we shall pray, our pastor said, we shall pray. As in the state I was, to them I was anointed. According to them, this is the most anointed preacher. Yani, all of you can be like into Jerieze, into whoever. But there are my people here who are like, this is the most anointed woman on the face of the earth. Ah, you are not by now. Who is Catherine Kuhlman? Who? Who you are Nani? According to them, I am Catherine Kuhlman. You understand? Yes, you are. That is what. That is what I'm saying. That you you set your affection and your determination on your shepherd, and you say this one is my shepherd, not Maliza. Hakuna story ingine. They don't have to prophesy like Nani. They don't have to that you stay. You, you determine. The anointing they have is what is enough for me. There is nothing more that I need. This one that they have, that is what I need. Ah, may the Lord make us that church that is steady. Steady. I have realized that even the prophetic men can draw from a prophet by their expectation. They can draw something from a prophet by their expectation. There are places I have gone and word of knowledge has flowed. Other places I have gone and there is nothing. Why? Expectation. Jesus went to Nazareth, his own city. The Bible records he could not do many miracles there. Why? They did not receive him as a prophet. They didn't believe him. So imagine God himself limited to do miracles because of the belief of people. Praise the name of Jesus. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kuna watu wako kwa simu na ngoja wa eh wamalize. Wacha tu ngojea wamalize. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe sana. Yaani kajab kanajika. Hata tu niwache. Sasa The second thing is receive them as prophets. So number one, believe in them. Number two, receive them as prophets. Matthew chapter 10 verse 41. Matthew 10 41. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. What does this mean? It means receive them according to the deposit that they carry. The deposit that is in them, receive them. Praise the name of the Lord. So that's what I mean, that when you see somebody with something, consider not just the outside. Consider not just that they love the Lord, but consider that they may have something for you. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Consider that they may have something for you. Something for you. There, there is something very interesting about church. I actually never knew this before I planted, we, we started church. But Apostle and I have seen this a few times. When people come to church and say, God sent me to help you, they don't stay. Yes, if somebody views themselves as your help, even if somebody views themselves as your financial helper, they are unable to stay. Why? Because they think of themselves higher than you as their prophet. If somebody thinks of themselves as your help, you have nothing that we have noticed. They leave. They don't stay. But if somebody thinks that they are giving is honoring God, they remove you out of that equation. 
and they think that they are giving is honoring God and they think that there is something in this prophet for me whether I have money like them whether I have the, I remember that uh, Pastor Faith and uh, and Sir Vincent when we just started Fortress I don't even know if we had officially started I, I told them I wanted to take them through the premarital class please remember I was single single like Pekango too, like Panga. <laughs> I also want you to remember, Pekango too, that I was a single mom. And I told them, we are going to go through this class and we will be meeting Saturdays at 7 a.m. One day, and we began the class, Vini has never been pastored by a lady. For now, not live alone young, much younger than him. So he comes into it and he's like, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. He wasn't even a very, like, I don't, if we hadn't started church, he wasn't a member yet. But he came. One day they called me, Friday Gioni, and they said, we are so sorry we didn't tell you, but we are in Kisi. I said, tomorrow at seven, you better be here. Some of you would be like, Akipa, see, you are too much. Seven, they were there. They drove through the night to be in class at seven. Anything I said, they did. Why? They thought that I had something for, they were convinced in their hearts, I have something for their marriage. They had not done, a, by the way, after that is when they were able to officiate their union. They knew there is something in Pastor Lee. For, there is no day we have ever to, sat to discuss, what can I tell you? and you are single, or what can I, never, we've never had that conversation. That's how you receive a prophet. You don't receive a prophet by your own, you know, you're like, but who are you? This one is too young. This one is too this. This one is too this. Pastor John gave a, a testimony here that when God sent him to fortress and he was longing for a father, and then he met apostle and was like, God, Allah, is this, this is the father you told me. <laughs> this is the father that you told me I'm not understanding the mathematics but come and see God it has worked out tremendously well <laughs> glory to God yeah. identify the office in a man appreciate it recognize it don't receive them less than they are I remember when prophetess was commissioned here as a prophetess she was shocked, shocked or shocked. And she's like, I don't know, what am I supposed to do? I'm like, prophesy. And I'm telling you, if you need a prophetic word today, that is your person. Accurate, accurate. Why? Because she recognized the gift in the man of God and she agreed even when it didn't make sense to her. Are we together? Amen. Amen. Everything we receive in the kingdom of God is based on faith, and faith is based on recognition. When you see somebody and you appreciate, this is, some, this is what this person carries. Maybe I should say this, that um, because apostle, many couples we meet, we don't meet couples who are like us, that both of us minister, at, like probably at the, at the levels we minister. I don't know. Just you understand what I'm saying. Kizungu <laughs> imeisha. And one of the things that people assume is that because of my strength, I don't know. In fact, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. But let me tell you this. That apostles' directions over my life have changed my life. My husband's directions. I have sown seeds to servants of God, but not to the amount that I have sown to him. And I will package my offering. I remember we went out for dinner one day, and, and uh, God spoke, God had told me, clear your savings. And Yanni, I was so diligent about my savings, and he said, give to him. And I want you to know that he could have decided to buy himself anything. Uh, a Ferrari, thank you. I had that many savings. Could have bought a Ferrari. 
And I, I, I told him, I need you to speak a word over my life. There are many times that his prophetic direction has changed me. I remember when I was feeling like this country has caged me in. And I'm like, I don't understand. I'm not moving forward in my personal ministry. And he gave me an instruction. He told me, I want you to package an offering. And this is where I want you to send it. And that's what I did. And he prayed for me. And about a few weeks later, maybe four, six weeks later, is when I got the call for Rema Feast. Pro- you would think that because we argue, we hang out, I know all of his weaknesses, he knows all of my weaknesses, but still I'm not confused about the prophet that he is. I can never be confused. I have seen my life shift over and over and over. For those of you that were in the first Kesha when he came to minister in, in the house in Membley, when we, were, when we had just started dating, and he prophesied to me that day, and many of those words came to pass. That time I didn't have any money, but I gave honorarium to him. My boyfriend then, I gave him honorarium. And it was sacrificial. And I knelt down and asked him to lay hands on me. I don't go to preach without him praying for me. He prays for me. Why? I recognize. So please don't look at somebody and you're like, I know them too well. The minute you know someone too well to receive them, they are of no benefit to you. Glory to God. Okay. Number three, obey them. Mambo ya mechemka. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17. Are we together? Oh, yes. I'm not I'm not feeling like we're together. Are yes. we together? Yes. Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Okay. So, this, this, this scripture has too much. The first thing that it has is obey. I don't know uh, for married women if, you're, if, you're, if your vows had the beat for and I will obey you. Kama kuna vow ngumu kusema ni hiyo ya obey. Because you are like, I just came from my parents' house. Kazi kila mahali ku obey, obey, obey. Ah, surely, what, what are these? <laughs> but now the Bible is not just saying obey your husband o- obey and submit to your leaders so that when they say something that thing becomes the law recently I watched an interview Reverend Kathy was speaking with a man of God called Apostle Felix Oko please, please put it in Passion Translation uh, Apostle Felix Oko and he was saying how he, he needed to go to are we together? Yeah. You cannot get tired. So, the, the man of God says that he wanted to go to Canada. He went to Bible school. He was, he was uh, sent to, to assist a church. One day they were all recalled by their bishop. Then they were posted to plant branches, but he was not posted. And he stayed and stayed and was wondering what's going on. And then one day he said, I want to go to Canada. So he went and tried to apply for a visa. But he was told, you cannot get a visa when your passport has never traveled anywhere. So his friend told him, let's try and get you another visa so that you can go back and apply for the Canadian one. So he went and applied for and, and he got a South Africa visa, and he's like, South Africa? That's, he has no interest whatsoever. So anyway, he meets up with his spiritual mom, and he tells her the story. He's like, oh, I want to go to Canada. And, and, and. and the mom say, and he says, but imagine I got a visa to South Africa. The spiritual mom changes, and she tells him, come, let me pray for you. And she lays hands on him, and she says, I release you to South Africa. Where had he planned to go? He was released to where? The very day he was prayed for, he borrowed money to go to South Africa. He, the friend he borrowed money also told him, because he doesn't know anybody in South Africa, the friend told him, I have a cousin, but my cousin is a drug dealer. And he's like, I don't, it's okay, hook me up with him. 
and the drug dealer gives him a place to stay. Today, the man has a 7,500 seater church, 81 branches, because he obeyed his spiritual mom despite all odds. He was not there like Sitaki, South Africa. He didn't say it. He went to where he was sent. How many of us would do that? How many of us, because we are a church planting church, if today we said, Charles and she, today is the last day of you being in Membli, Kutoka Kesho, Munaenda Mombasa, how many people would pack up everything? I remember when I moved to, to Ruiru, Pastor Ella was living in, in Kitengela. And she, and she called me and she told me, I've heard that you moved. And I said, yes, I moved. And she said, I don't know if you want us to plant a church. I don't know what you want us to do, but I am moving. When? This week. Come and see Pastor Ella moving immediately with three children. Just so that I can tell her what we are doing. She said, whether you plant, whether you, whatever you want to do, I want to be here while we are doing it. Now she's in Dubai. By the word of an authority. Even that Dubai. She came from Dubai visiting. She went for a mission. When she came back, we told her, think about it. Think about it. Maybe there is work for you to do. She had never ever thought of it. Never wanted it. Never desired it. Her wish would have been to be here with us. When we said it, it was the law. How many people are that open? Take their instructions with weight. Obey your spiritual leaders and recognize their authority. For they do what? Keep watch over your souls. Can we all testing. read that? For they keep watch over, over your, your soul. soul. What does that mean? We have been given a responsibility to keep watch over your soul. So that means that we have a response. We need to know you. You need to belong to a fusion group. Help us to keep watch over right, your soul. soul without resting uh -huh. since they will give an account to God for their work. So we, we, we are not just watching over your souls that when we get to heaven God will read us a list and he will say this is who and who I gave you. Where are they? What are they doing? Why are they doing? Why didn't they do what they were supposed to do? So it will benefit you when you make their work a pleasure and not a heavy burden. Why shouldn't you do it? Why shouldn't you make their work difficult? For it is unprofitable to you. Isn't that so sad? That the leadership of your shepherd can be unprofitable to you if you make their work difficult. So thou shalt not hurt your pastor's feelings again in Jesus' name. Take their instructions with weight. Second Kings chapter 5 from verse 1. There is one of us here who I, I, I would go to their house and they had this little um, figurines. What do you call them? Uh, this small people, wooden, <laughs> wooden wazes. Do you know those wooden waze that you put at the top of your window? And I, they are what? Gnomes. I call them figurines. They are not minions. <laughs> huh? Those curios, all the old men, you know them? And so this person had old men sitting on there. So I was okay. I, I mean, the first time I saw them, I was like, I don't like this old man. But eventually now it became an urgency. And I told them, I want you to go and ban all those old men. And so they remove the old men and they go and ban them. Yeah, one of them, one of the old men completely refuses to ban. Completely. So they pick back the old man and return them, Pale Jew. Return the old man, Pale. And then as they are praying, one day, the old man's head falls off and falls on their son, on the dining table. If they had never considered what I said, if they were just 
rationalizing and telling, you know, they are just curious. They are just curious. They are just curious. Who knows what was going on behind the scenes? If you have an old man in anyway, uh, <laughs> Naaman was sent to Elisha. Now, Naaman was a captain in the army. Then he is told to go and bathe seven times. I, I, I don't know how to say this. God will not always instruct you in ways that make sense. I don't know. Can you hear that and hear me well? God will not always tell you the things that make sense. The number of times he will tell you to fast for one day, very few. Sometimes he will tell you fast for three months. You are like God, but you are the same powerful God. If I fast for one day, is it not the same as three months? There are things God will tell you that sound so ridiculous. God has ever told me to clear my entire closet more than once. The day, there is a day, Christmas time was coming up and God tells us to give out our van. God tells us to give out our dining table, which we have never recovered by the way, two years later. He tells us to give out our couches. If anybody came to our house, it was a hall. It was a hall. Like we could put seats and worship there because there was nothing there. But those were the instructions of God. Very soon after that, God was going to show us why he gave us that instruction. Obey the prophets. Where? Amen. <laughs> the, the one that is coming is from Revelation 2 1. Scripture regarded them as angels. Have you written? Re right. Scripture regarded the pastors as angels. <laughs> and, to, and to the angel of the church of Ephesus, write. These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, that walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. That angel there is not angel, the one you think, the invisible. That angel there is the pastor of Ephesus, the elder of Ephesus. Scripture regarded the pastor as an angel. Why? Not, not the mystical vibe of the angel, but the messenger. The messenger part of him is what scripture regarded as an angel. Are we together? Yes. So it's not perfection, it's not mystery, it's not mystical. It's that they were regarded as an angel by, because they were a messenger of God. I'm not going to insist there so that you don't say agahot. <laughs> Esteem them, First Thessalonians 5.13. And esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. What does that mean? Think of them highly. Speak of them well. Naaman, by the way, was healed because of a slave girl that believed in him. There was a slave girl that told the wife of Naaman and said, if only my master would see the prophet in Samaria. He would cure him of his leprosy. It is the faith of the, of the, of the slave girl that was of benefit to Naaman. What do you speak of your pastors? Actually, let me just insist on this. Have you seen people posting all kinds of fake prophets? What do you respond? Have you seen people say, pastor this, pastors this, pastors that? What do you respond? How many times have you ever told somebody, I have a fantastic pastor? How many times have you even volunteered and said on Facebook, not all pastors are this. We have great pastors. How often do you speak well? Where do you get an opportunity and take it to speak well of your pastors? He's getting wasa and wasa. Take care of them. Jabidi is almost here. He will, he will psych you up. Na akisema delete, mjue hasemi delete the sermon. Kuna wimbo moja inaitua delete, but 
kuna ingine wake a tick. So he's coming to wake a tick on the sermon. <laughs> Haya. So Elisha goes to this is a very interesting story that Elisha uh, meets this Shunammite woman who invites him for meals and nini and then one day she tells her husband let's build him a house so that he can be staying here when he comes Elisha then asks Gehazi his servant what can we do for this woman and Gehazi is like well she doesn't have a child and so he prays and this woman gets a child one day the child gets a headache and dies. What does the woman do? She t- goes straight to the prophet with her child. And Elisha raises up the boy. What was the trigger for Elisha to go to those extents? To pray for her to have a child? Pray for her for the child to come alive? There's a story told of Archbishop Idahosa of a woman. Actually, I think he said it in the pastor's meeting. Pastor Ayo not Archbishop, Pastor Ayo said it in the pastor's meeting, that Archbishop Idahosa had a woman who would bring him a cow every time he would have a conference. One day, a truck came in and she, he thought she had brought a cow. But when, she, when he went out, he saw her son dead inside the truck. And his, she, Idahosa was like, this is not the son you take. Don't know this one. This one is not the one you take. Look for the one that doesn't, that's what a bishop said. Look for the one that doesn't bring a cow. But this one, you don't. What was, what provoked uh, Elisha to go that far? This woman took care of him. Galatians chapter 6 verse 6. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that no, no, teacheth no, no, no. in all good no, things. No, 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 please. Put it in NIV. This one I want us to read together so that people don't say, Aga what? Aga doi. Aha. We, we read it all together. If I see somebody not reading, we start again. Hey, one, two, go. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. Okay, when did you share a good thing with your instructor? Put it in Passion Translation. <clears throat> what to Akwenda USA? <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> uh-huh. And those who are taught the word? No, everybody. One, two, go. And those who are taught the word? Some of you are not reading convincingly. No, no. Why are you reading it like you're upset? Is it me? Is that not the word of God? Shall you be mad at God? One, two, go. And those who are taught the word must share all the things with their teacher and share it all the takes between them. So the teacher is sharing their wealth. Then the, the instructor is sharing their wealth, a sharing of wealth. As the teacher instructs, the taught shares in all good things. Amplified. Jesus. Amplified classic. Uh huh. When did you share, did you contribute to the material support of your, am I you offended? No, not you. No, no, not you. You cannot be, can never be you. But when have you sat and thought, is it possible kuneza kuwa that kwa pasi kuna maziwa? Is it possible? I remember, today, this week I remembered Elsie would bring me a uh, half a liter. Mi atasko na joku na kuanga na half a liter. Na joku na half a liter ya mafuta. Kado. Elsie would faithfully bring me. Na Elsie ni kama ume change. Oh, okay. Analipanga kinyozi ya apostle. For real. Oh, that is so sweet. This girl with 
living in a tiny little house with Zawa like I'm wondering how they are surviving and I'm letting my foot I'm like oh it is too much when is the last time I remember Pastor Charles <laughs> used to ni make it too easy kwa nyumba suddenly mattresses zinapita the man has gone and bought a mattress another day towels zimekuja amle another day blender hata sina blender blender buyer of blenders <laughs> blender in a pit okay when is the last time that you thought about your pastor and you were like i need to consider my pa- not the church my pastor finally so that you don't say agahot Pray for the church and leaders. No, before we go there, can I have my phone? There is a scripture that talks about a gift opening a door for you. I want to say something that you may not like. But it's my responsibility. Proverbs 18.16. Proverbs 18.16. Okay. Can you put it in NIV? Can we read it together? A gift. A gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. You want to open certain doors. You want to open the heart of a person towards you. A gift is the best way. You have to know what are the things. There is a protocol to the kingdom. I'm saying this because this has worked for me and Apostle. When we were told that we were going to be at Tremor Feast, we were so excited because we got an opportunity to give a gift to the men of God who have poured into our lives. We spoke to our protocol team and gave them money. They went and changed and put it in many envelopes. When we meet Apostle Kimani, we would give him a gift. When we met so and so, we would give him a gift. When we, you have to know there are things that would keep you at the top of somebody's mind. Please remember, this story about Elsie is 2019, and I will never forget it. It's not the biggest gift I have ever received, but to me, it's one of the most worthwhile gifts. I'll never forget because of the level of sacrifice that it would take for her to do that. A gift is a door opener for the hearts of men towards you. You may not like it, but it's my responsibility to tell you that. Are we together? First Corinthians 9, 11. Before we go into praying for your leaders, then we are done. If we have sown spiritual seed among you, is it too much if we reap a material harvest from you? Where? 14. Verse 14. In the same way, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should receive their living from the gospel. Many times, people will often attach. Remember the woman that came with her two two mites to give. To Jesus, that was honorable. There is probably another woman there who had two mites but never gave. Yet God, Jesus considered, do you understand the issue? We live in a day when people will fight sacrifice, people will fight gifting, people will fight, but I'm telling you for for us, we have risen through certain protocols. There are certain protocols that have led us in a certain direction. And listen, I know there are some imbalances in the church, but don't throw the water out with the baby. The principle works. Are we together? The principle works. There are certain things that, ha- things that have worked for us because we have taken seriously the protocols of the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Okay. Pray for your church and the leaders, finally. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, 
words may be given to me so that I will fearlessly, fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. Glory to God. But, but I want to add something to that. Pray for us that we may be bold about the gospel, but pray for us that we may stay faithful. Pray for us that we may stay hearing the voice of God. Pray for us that our marriage will stand. Pray for us that our children will do well. Why? All of these things are of benefit to the church. It is of no benefit to the... We've seen churches fall apart because um, the marriage of the pastor did not work out. We have seen uh, churches fall apart. We have a pastor who was telling us about two, three weeks ago because of their financial situation. They want to shut down the church. Pray for us that God will continually, continually increase us, that we will never be stressed by a place to live, that we will never be stressed by means of transport, that our focus will be fully in God. Pray for us. If there is anything that you can do for us, is pray for us. Pray that God will continue to give us a voice in the land. Pray that God will give us relevance. That God will anoint our tongues. Like today I needed boldness. Because some of the things are not easy for me to say. But I needed boldness. Keep praying for us. That God will give us boldness. Pray for our health. Pray for our health. Pray for our children. Pray for us. If you do that for us, you will have done very well. Now I want us to pray. I don't even want you to stand up. I want you to just pray and ask God, Lord, help me. First of all, that you may help me to posture myself in the right way to receive from my pastors. But number two, help me, Lord, that I will profit from my association with my shepherds. Open your mouth, begin to pray. Begin to pray and speak to the Lord and tell the Lord, Lord, help me. Help me, oh God, that I will, by the word of the prophet, I will profit. By the word of the prophet, I shall increase. By the word of the prophet, I shall grow. In the name of Jesus, pray for me. Pray, pray, pray that God will help you. That God will, that, that he will increase you in your posture of humility. In the name of Jesus, pray that God will help you to posture yourself to increase and to grow in Jesus' name.